cloud. Um, here we go. Hold on here. I have to check something. I don't know why. I'm not getting the speaker that I need. Come on. Okay, then I'll use same as system. Okie doke. So I presume everybody can hear me okay. Everyone can see the screen. So let's go over what this lesson covers. Um, it's lesson 10, I believe, and it covers uh, blends, gradients, and patterns. And you can see in the final iterations of both of these files that they provide for us that we have all of the above. And this one, because it's not loading the the exact font that we want, um, we're gonna go back and select something else. There we go, let's do that, same with that. And um, just, I don't know, it just doesn't really matter what, what we're using here. Okay. So there's, oh, come on. There we go, famous Frank's, uh, hot dogs, um, and you can see, let's start at the top here. We have a really interesting blend that goes from a deep red to a light orange and the same with the, that's for the bun and the hot dog. And you can see the little blips of, um, uh, of ketchup on the top here that also have little highlights on them. So that means that there is a nice little blend it's or um, gradient that's working in there. Um, I also have in the mustard, um, we have a gradient that's working in there. And then believe it or not, in the whole side of the truck, we have a different kind of gradient because in the past, um, <clears throat> in Illustrator, you could only have two kinds of gradients. You could have um, linear or radial and now they have these kind of freeform gradients that are really kind of um, uh, a variation on the mesh tool, um, but it's much more sophisticated and I think much more robust. Then the last thing that we're going to do in there is we're gonna work with blends. You can see that it goes from a little small star to a large or vice versa. Um, you don't need to create those separately. You can create what is called a blend to do that, and that works very nicely. Um, we can add um, attributes to the text that we'll do. Um, and before I go any further with this, not to, uh, I'm sure most of you are aware of this, but next week is spring break, so we'll finish up this lesson after um, spring break, okay? Um, so that's one part of it. Then we go to the other, and you can see, again, it's another, um, we have the same hot dog and bun up here, but notice at the side of the truck now, instead of um, being uh, covered with blends and gradients, it looks like it's either uh, uh, an airbrush job on the side or kind of a plastic wrap or something, that we see a pattern that's going on here. And what they've done here is they provided this pattern for us. And it's really pretty straightforward, this part of it. So I'm gonna open up a brand new file and let's go over each of those, the tools separately uh, to show you how they work, okay? So that's what I'm gonna do today. That's all we're gonna cover. So I'm gonna go to file new. And I just wanna create a brand new um, letter size. How about horizontal? Okay, so we just have a blank piece of paper here. Now, um, in the past, you could not apply gradients to strokes, but you can now. It started though with something simple. Let's go ahead and do 
the ellipse tool. I'm going to go ahead and make a circle. And by default, it has a white fill, black stroke. Those are just the default settings. But if we come up over here in the swatch panel, they have a handful of gradients that are available to us. So let's go ahead and select the first one. And if I look at that, and let's go ahead, I'm going to pull off swatches here. And let's go ahead and close that. And then also let's look at the gradient tab. And I'm going to pull that off. OK. And then there's a couple of others that we'll be using too, stroke and transparency, a whole variety of things. But um, we have the tools over here in the, the, the panels section. We have them here in the properties panel. We also have blend or gradients over here in the tools. And if you look at this one beneath the gradients, that is for the blend tool. So there, again, like with everything else, there's a lot of repetition, a lot of redundancy built into all of this. Now, the, the trick is what we want to do is we want to be able to control these gradients. So let's go ahead and um, let me enlarge this a little bit, not a whole lot. Um, you can see that the blend or the gradient, I should say, fills the, um, the shape quite nicely. And this would be considered a linear blend, OK? So here's the linear. And you can see that when we click here, um, we have other, whatever we've added to our library, here is some other um, gradients as well. Um, we have fading sky. And we have black to white. And I'm going to go back to the orange and yellow, OK? If we look to the right here under gradient, this one indicates that it is a linear gradient. The one here next to it indicates that it is that we would want a radial gradient. And the one next to that is a freeform gradient. That is relatively new to Illustrator. Um, by default, it selects the linear gradient. And then when we come down here, you can see in this little color bar, this tells us what colors are available in this gradient. You can add to, subtract from, or we can edit the, the, um, the colors that are in that gradient. By default, the gradient goes from left to right, right to left. But if you want it to go at an angle, if you want it to go from top to bottom, it's very easy to do. To do that, what we do is we select the gradient tool. And you can see that this little widget appears. So what I can do is if I want to change the angle of this, I can go ahead and click and drag like so. And notice that the gradient now goes at an angle. If I want to change the position of it, notice that if it's I want it to be predominantly red and less orange and yellow, I can move it there or I can move it up so that there's just a hint of orange in the upper left hand corner. If I want it distributed evenly, I put it there like so. So again, over one corner, you go ahead and you can move it, and it changes it. If I move over the next corner and I move down, I make sure that it um, covers the entire uh, distance of the shape, then I have that. Now, if I want to change the colors inside of that, I can do it from the gradient panel or I can do it from this little widget here. So let's say, for example, at the very top, instead of the red, um, I want uh, maybe a blue or a purple. Well, by just double clicking on that little dot, a little spot of color, it gives me options here. Um, just as we have over here, we have um, our CMYK callouts. We can select from our swatch panel, or you can use an eyedropper tool. It doesn't really matter which one. So let's select from swatches, and I'm going to pick uh, kind of a deep purple here. And you can see that that was added there. Now I can click off of it. Now if I want, I can move these in any direction I want. Now I guess there was another color at the very end that I failed to acknowledge, but that's OK. And we can go ahead and we can move these like so. 
And now if you see on the right-hand side, you see the little diamond shape? That indicates where you want the blend of those two colors to be. Do you want them to be uh, exactly at midpoint or do you want them to fall off quickly or slowly, depending at one end or the other? Okay, so that's how that works. Again, if I select this one, now let's select this one at this end. I can change it and you can see that it appears here. I can double click here. Well, come on. There we go. And let's pick, um, just out of curiosity, pick a green. So it's very easy to add. Um, I'm changing the current colors. If I want to add a color, um, I move inside the bar and I click on it. Come on. I want to add a color. Let me go ahead in here. Let me stretch this out and see if I can't do this a little bit differently. There we go. There we go. When you roll over it, like so, you have to see the little plus sign in the lower right hand corner. So if I click there, it, what it does is it takes from the green to the yellow and it blends automatically between the two. So whatever that yellow is and whatever that green is, that's what we have. And when you move it closer to one side or the other, again, it changes the configuration of that color. If you wanna change the color of it, again, we can go ahead from um, over here and we can change the colors. We can go ahead and we can change it from here or here. It really doesn't make any difference. We can just simply double click on it and let's pick um, a brown, okay? And now let's go ahead and shrink that back. And now I've kind of made a, a mess of it. But you can see, um, you can have a whole bunch of colors if you wish. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go back to our original. So I can always go back to the um, yellow orange. Or if I've constructed a gradient that I want to keep, it's no different than what we've done with a color swatch as before, all I have to do is I have to click in the swatch panel, a little the little plus button for a new swatch, okay? And I don't want that. I want to deselect that color because it's going to add that brown, and I want to add the whole gradient. So let me go back here. And let's go back to the gradient tool. There we go. Hopefully none of them are selected, and let's select that again. Uh, I don't want just that one color. Let's select that. I want the whole gradient to be added. So let's do it from here. Let's click from here. Um, come on, come on, come on. Okay, I know what to do. I'm going to do it this way. The little um, color swatch that's here, if I click there and I drag into here, it adds that as a gradient. So I can always go back here to our original gradient. So that's not lost. And if I want to go back to the gradient that I just worked with, I can select this one here. So let's select that. Come on, come on, come on. Uh, let's go back to the shape. Let's go back to gradients. Let's select this one. There we go. So now it selects it again. Okay. So I want to go back to a simpler gradient so that uh, that works for us. I'm going to go back to the yellow orange. So this is um, um, very simple linear gradient that we're working with. Um, if we want, let's try the radial gradient. And you'll see that it's very similar, but slightly different. Again, it goes from the center outward. And again, if I want to change the placement of, there we go, got to click. I can change the proportions of this if I want. And then I can come back here and I can change the, you know, the, the scale of that. And if I click here, come on. I want to move it, there you go. I want to move it over a tad. And then let's go back over here. Um, 
Yeah, see how you can change all of that? I'm gonna go back again. There we go. I'm trying to just simply move this. So let me move over here and let's move it to the side like so. And then we can change the size of it. Again, by pulling over that, we can change the position of it. Let's go ahead and move over here a little bit. And then if I move it down, you can see by changing the radius of this and the scale of it, we can um, make it look like a little highlight on the side of our, our gradient. So that's on the side of our sphere. So that's one of the things that we can do. Let me undo a few times. So we're back to the radial gradient. And again, by selecting the gradient tool, it gives us that little widget again. So again, I can make change the size of it by clicking and dragging like so. I can change the orientation of it or the position of it like so. I can move over the bar and I can move it around like so, so that gradient can be anywhere inside that shape. Okay, and like with the linear gradient, I can go back in and I can add colors. Um, oh, I didn't show you how to subtract colors. It's sim very simple. You simply go over the color, click and drag it off. Now, instead of four colors or five colors, I only have, what do I have? Well, I have, instead of five colors, I only have four colors now. And if I don't like those changes, again, just hit Command Z and we go back to where we were. And if you don't like any of those, you can always go back to here and we can go back to our default. Okay, and then we can select the radial again and we're back to where we started, no sweat. The next one, which is a little bit um, more challenging to use is um, we have, uh, we can use points. And again, this is our freeform gradient. And this can be used two different ways with points or lines. So I'm gonna start with points and I'm gonna start clicking here, 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 and here. Wherever I've added a point is an area where we can distribute color. So if I just double click on that and I put the color there, if I double click on this one and I put a color here, it's like little spots of, of color that you might see if you were um, adding color by adding watercolor, I'm just, you know, distributing these randomly. Um, let's put a deep color down there. So that's how that one works. If we um, undo that several times, let's go back. Let me go re repeat that. And now let's go back again and select that free form. But this time I'm going to use lines. So both of these points and lines are used in this assignment. And now what I can do is I can click, and if I can click here and here, and it's basically like the, um, the curvature tool. But every time you click and add that anchor point, oh, come on. Let me do that again. There we go. Click, 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 click. And now if I double click on each of those, again, I can add a color that follows that path. Very, very powerful for creating extraordinary effects. Okay, I'm picking these colors randomly. And we can click off of it and you can see that we have, and we can always take, go back because this is um, a path that we can manipulate. We can always go back and we can remove points. Um, I don't wanna create a point. I just simply want to come over here and move it like so. I can come over here and move this like so. And I can come over here and move it like so, and here. If you wanna add a point, again, you just click and we can manipulate it and move it around like so. Very, very powerful. So those are the fundamentally the three kinds of gradients. We have the linear, the radial, 
And we have the free form, and the free form can be used with points or lines, either one. Okay. Now, if you want to get rid of a stop, you select it, and then you come back. Let's go ahead and click on maybe this one just for the heck of it. And I can hit the little trash can, and that removes it. If you want to add a stop, again, it would be the same thing. You can go back and you can move anywhere in here and you can move over the path and click and you've added a stop. And similar to what it's done with the linear and the radial gradient, it takes from these two points and it blends a color um, and creates one in between. Very, very cool. And again, if we switch back to linear, it goes back to that one. We go back to this one, it's radial. But when, as soon as you switch to um, free form, <clears throat> it just abandons all of those colors and because um, it doesn't know what order you want to put them and um, changes those. Now, that's for shapes. Okay. So let's um, put this aside and let's go ahead and with the curvature tool, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a path. Okay. So click here, here here and here, okay? Now, I don't want to fill, so I'm going to select no fill, and I want to affect just the stroke. And now what I can do is I can come over here because you're on a one point rule, you really can't see the stroke all that well. So let's really crank this up to maybe 20, 50 points, something like that. And if you aren't aware of it, by default with this path, um, it, uh, it it cuts off abruptly in the middle of the endpoints. If you want them rounded, and that's what they've done with that little hot dog and bun shape, they're single paths, but um, uh, not, not fills, but they've applied a gradient to them, which is, again, pretty cool. Now, you can see what that is. That's a linear gradient. If I switch to, or a radial gradient, if I switch to a linear gradient, that's what I have there. And I can go ahead and I can hold down the command key and end the path. Let's come back to the gradient tool and click in here. Let's select the path. There we go. Let's select the gradient tool. And let's go ahead and we have linear selected. And uh, what I want to do is with a stroke, we can affect the gradient from here. So by default, we have that one. We can also, oh, come on, let me select the path. There we go. There we go. So I can select the stroke here, here. Notice how it's inverting and changing the gradient or here. And again, that's what we're doing inside this lesson. Very, very powerful. This was not available um, until just recently. And the same with the freeform gradient tool. Really, really super powerful. Okay. So that's with strokes. <clears throat> Does that make that available? So I'm going to go ahead and this one I'll get, I'll move, oh, I'll move both of them to the side just a little bit. Okay. So the next one that I wanted to show you, um, because we have both patterns and we have um, uh, the blends to use. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll show you the blend next, and then we'll work on the patterns um, last. Um, before I show you the blends, though, with, regarding, with regard to um, libraries for gradients, um, with the swatch panel available, you can click where this little library symbol is. And you'll notice that we have a tab specific, specifically for gradients, from wood to water, earth tones, fades, foliage, all sorts of stuff. These are all gradient fills that are worth um, looking at. And every time you add one, you can see that there's a whole library of these. So if I select you know, this one, and I click in here, you can see that you can get some really stunning effects from this without a lot of muss or fuss. But um, these are also extremely useful if you're trying to create somewhat realistic 
Well, they can be used for anything. But um, if you want to create a quasi kind of realistic looking illustration, these different types of gradients um, are extremely useful um, to create the subtle undulation of tones and com you know, compound curves and things like that. So, um, okie doke. So that library is there. We can close that. And every time you select one from that library, it automatically adds that gradient to your swatch panel, just like it would with any other library or color. And you'll find very shortly for um, uh, patterns that that's the same. So I can close that one. It's um, most of these I have never used. Um, there are just so many of them from what you know to choose from. So I'll go ahead and I'll close, leave that. We'll leave that alone. Okay. Um, next one. As I said, we want to cover the use of um, the um, uh, the blend tool. So to the blend tool, you need either multiple strokes or you need multiple shapes. And they, in this particular exercise, they've only used the shapes, but I will show you both to use either um, um, strokes uh, to blend between them or um, shapes. So let's start with creating a couple of shapes. So I'm going to go back over here. And let's create a star. And this is what they do in the exercise. So we create a little star like so. And I got to go back and I have to change. I don't want a 60 point rule. I want just a one point. And I'm going to go back to the default settings here. Um, let's go back to default. And then let's go ahead and fill it with a gradient just for the heck of it. So let's go ahead and fill it with our original gradient. This one here. Oh, I didn't want a stroke. I don't want that. Let's go ahead and select the fill. Let's go ahead and select. There we go. So we have a little star. Now I'm going to make a duplicate of it. And if you don't remember, this is one to remember. Hold down the Option or Alt key and click and drag. And I've made a copy of it. Now I can go ahead and hold down the Shift and Option or Alt key and make a larger version of it like so. So what I want to do now is I want to blend from this star to this one or vice versa. So what we do is we select the blend tool. And what you want to do is you want to pick like point with like point. So I'm going to start with the top here and the top point there. And notice that it creates multiples inside. Now, if you want more or a different kind of blend, we can do that. And you simply do that, um, control that by double clicking on the blend tool. And right now it says spacing is smooth. I don't see that as a smooth color. Let's try specific steps. Right now it just says two. How about if I want four and I turn the preview off and on. And now I have multiples in between. So if you go back and we do a smooth color, um, it's not going to allow us to do that with these shapes because I have outlines. If I didn't have outlines, it would um, our gradients would allow me to do that. So I'll show you what that does. Okay, and they don't have to be the same kind of shape. It can go from a circle to a square or whatever you want. You just have to pick like. Um, versions of that. So let me undo that and show you the difference. I'm going to try to get this to fail. Um, so I'm going to click the left star here and I'm going to click the right star or how about the bottom right point there. And it worked pretty well. And that's not what I wanted. Let's click over here. No, that's working okay. I'll try it again to get it to fail. When I want things to fail, they don't. When I don't want them to fail, they do. Isn't that the nature of things? So, um, so here we go. Um, as I said, we could uh, we can use different shapes, or you can blend between colors or or uh, strokes. So I'm going to get rid of these two because this is similar to what we're doing. Well, let me go ahead and do that again because there is one thing that I forgot to do. 
um, I'm going to go back and I'm going to blend from here to here. Is when you have a blend, notice that there is a stroke that connects them. So if you want, you can um, deselect those or release that, that blend. And if you want, you'll have four separate shapes that are, that are all kind of morphed in between. If you don't want it to, to, to take a straight path, what you can do is or, you know, go in a straight line, that path can be curved. It is a Bezier curve. So what we can do is we can come back with the, um, let's go back to the, um, the anchor point tool. And I can click on here and I can click and I can drag and I can go in any direction that I want and notice that it's following the curvature of the path. So that's what we're doing here. We're ha having it follow. And you just have to adjust a little bit so that they look like they're evenly distributed. Um, this could be a good way. You know, it's like um, attaching clothes to a clothesline. So if you're wondering how to string beads together, you know, for a pattern, a, a type of pattern, or if you want um, an interesting kind of uh, frame that you're creating, with multiple shapes that are all strung together. That would be another way of doing that. So the blend tool can be really useful as well. And that's just one way of doing it. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna delete these or maybe let's just move them aside. Might be the easiest thing, move them up here. And let's try something a little bit different. Remember I said they don't have to be the same shape, they can be different shapes. So what I want to do next is let's go ahead and let's select a square. And I'm going to make it from the center outward. And I don't want any, let's see, I just want a solid, let's say red fill. There we go. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, an ellipse. And I don't want it to be red, I'm going to make it green. So I have these complementary colors. And I want to blend these two shapes together. And there's a couple of different ways that you can do that. I can do them individually, as I did here. Or I can actually get a smooth blend. And you'll see in between that um, for each um, shape that it makes in between, it also changes the color as well. So if for those of you who have had a little bit of color theory, you know that when you mix paints of a red and a green, um, they are complementary colors, you're going to get a brown. So let's do the same thing that we did before. I'm going to select here, and I'm going to click from here, and I'm going to click here. And by default, it's a smooth blend, and you can see the colors in between. Okay, we're actually kind of a greenish brown, and as they move toward the red, you get kind of a reddish brown. Okay, so it will blend colors as well as shapes. And then when I double click on the blend tool, that comes up. Instead of smooth blending, we can switch to specified steps. And by default, it did it in 254. But let's go ahead and select four steps just to see what we have. And you can see that uh, I'm going to switch to three so we can just see that a little bit better. There we go. I'm going to click OK. And you can see that it actually morphs from a square to a circle or vice versa, from a circle to a square. And again, you can leave it that way. I can bend the path if I wish, um, or I can release it from the blend. And I have these intermediate shapes that I can work with. Very, very nice. OK, so that's another option that we can use with blends. Now, we can also blend, as I said, paths. And that can be quite useful. So I'm going to take this one and move it aside as well. I'll put that up there. And let's just take, um, again, using the curvature tool. And I'm going to create um, And I want that to be green. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create kind of a nice smooth curve in here. OK. And I'm going to go ahead and hold down the command key and click to end that path. 
probably what I want to do. And again, these can be any, um, let's go ahead and create a, make this a little bit fatter though. Instead of one point, I'm gonna go up to maybe six points. And now let's go ahead with an, another line. Let's go ahead and click down here. And let's click a straight and, and make a straight path. Oh, come on. Okay, I'll use the pen tool then. Since you're being kind of... Uh... Oh, oh, oh. Let me go back again. Something else is popping up that I didn't notice. So let me go back again. Let's use, where's my pen tool here? I don't want that. Um, here it is. Lives inside of it. I'm just going to go ahead and click here. And then here, hold down the shift key. It's perfectly horizontal. Hold down the command key to end it. <coughs> and then what we can do, select this one. And just as I had done before, instead of green, let's pick red. Okay. Come on, for a stroke. Let's bring that forward. And I don't want the fill to be anything. Let's bring that forward. Come on. There we go. So I have green and red strokes. Now what I want to do is I'm going to use the blend tool again. And again, as I said, you go from like to like. So I'm just going to go from endpoint to endpoint. And notice how it blends the two. And again, that can be a smooth blend or it can be an individual steps. It really doesn't matter. Okay. Very, very powerful tool for creating some really unique effects. Um, and as I said, especially when you're trying to create compound curves and um, creating um, unusual uh, and complex effects, then this would be a useful tool to do, to do that. So I'm gonna move this to the side again. And I'll show you one more way of doing that. Let's go ahead and I'm gonna use the curvature tool um, to create an interest, you know, a little shape here. Okay, so um, I can leave that as a as a path, or I can make it a fill. And now let's make a copy of it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and hold down the Option key. Um, and make a copy. Uh, just let me go ahead and make a copy of it. Command C. Now I'm going to go to edit. And I'm going to say paste in place. And now let's change that one again to green just for the heck of it. I don't want that stroke to be green. I want. There we go. Let's make the stroke to be none. Just for the heck of it. Okay, so now what I can, can do is I can go ahead and I can reduce the size of this. So now we have um, a green stroke and shape inside. Now what we can do is we can blend the two and you'll see that it creates kind of an undulating or concave path. So I'll go ahead and I'll use the, um, the blend tool again. I'm gonna click and drag. And notice the effect that we get now. So they can be, can be done any number of different ways to create your blend effect. And again, we can take these shapes. If I use the direct selection tool, select this shape and we can move it wherever we want. So let me um, go back and deselect. And let's go back. How about with a group selection tool? And move this over here. Notice how it changes the configuration of the blend, just as we had before. Kind of funky, huh? Okay, so those are gradients. We have um, uh, we have blends, and the next thing that we're going to cover is um, patterns. So anything can be a pattern. Um, what we need to do is, I'm going to go ahead and zoom out of this for a minute. 
And I'm gonna create another artboard so that we've left these intact. Let's go back again to uh, our artboard tool. And I'm just gonna duplicate the one that I have. Move it over a little bit like so. And I want these to go back to where they were. I don't want them over there. Okay, so let's go ahead and zoom in here. So let's work with pattern fills now. Um, so to create a pattern, you need a group or not um, in order to do that. So it's easy to do. For example, if I wanna create a polka dot pattern, what I can do is I can select the ellipse tool and um, let's go in, let's make it, let's, let's make some red polka dots here. So I want it to be red fill and I want it to be no stroke. So I'll go ahead and make a little dot here. And what I need to do is I need to turn that into a pattern. So to do so, I click and I drag and I bring that inside my swatch panel. And you'll notice that, that it is a pattern now. Now what I know, what I can do is I can create another shape or use a circle again. I'm just gonna create um, a rectangle though and click and drag like so. And I'm gonna select a little polka dot for the fill I want. I don't want any stroke in the fill. I gotta make sure that I have the right one selected here. There we go, we have polka dots that fill it. Now, if you think that the polka dots are too close together, um, which they are, um, for my taste, um, we can go ahead and we can edit that. So if I double click on the, the pattern itself, we can come over here and um, we have some options available to us. You'll notice that we have we can name the pattern, so I'll just name it red dots. Okay, and right now it is in a strict grid. If you want it brick by row, that can be the pattern that you're going for. If you want it to be one by two under the offset or two by three, um, whichever one you want, um, notice that you have all of these options that can get really complex. I'm just gonna go back to one by four or what, well, I don't even know what I had before. One by three, one by two. Okay, let's go back to the strict grid again. Then what we can do is we can size the tile to art. Okay, so right now we have H and V spacing and it's in points. So let's go ahead and put 12 points and let's go ahead and put 12 points. And now I've expanded the pattern, expanded the, the pattern, okay? We can also determine if you want overlap or not, which is here. You can create, you know, do you wanna see this as five copies, three copies? Um, how many do you need to see? Or you just wanna see the one dot itself? So I find it very helpful to see it as five copies, okay? And right now it's dimming the copies. So you can see that as this shape repeats, um, that's the pattern that you'll get. Now, you can also have groups that turn into patterns as well. And that's what they've done. And I will jump to the next exercise here. Um, before I do though, remember like we have libraries of gradients, we also have libraries of um, patterns. So when I click on the little library or um, button on the swatch panel, I can come down here and we can look at patterns. We can have basic graphic patterns. We can have decor decorative patterns. We can have nature patterns. So let's try, for example, animal skins. Let's see what we have here. Let me go back and um, before I do this, I need to get out of this 
So let's go back here and let's finish our pattern here. Um, and instead of polka dot, let's go ahead and select a zebra pattern or something like that. So I got to make sure that I select. There's our zebra pattern. So it doesn't matter how big or how small image is, it will constantly repeat, 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 and to fill that shape. Now, if you choose to reduce a shape, so let me go back to our polka dot one. This would be a better example. That if I in, um, decrease the size of the shape, like so, notice that the polka dots remain the same size. If you want the pattern to um, reduce or increase in size as you change the size of the object, then that can be done too. So where that is done though, is when we come over to our scale tool, which should be found up here. And I'm gonna double click on the scale tool. And we can see here that it says scale corners. We don't have rounded corners, so it doesn't matter. Scale strokes and effects, sometimes you do need to do that. We want to make sure that we transform patterns as well. So if I go ahead and I change this now uniformly to 50%, and we look at the preview, notice that the polka dots have reduced in size to fit our new sized box. Very helpful, okay? Likewise, if I go ahead and I were to go to 200%, notice that the polka dots get bigger. And if you don't want them to scale, then we can do that and we can select preview and that's the effect that you get. Okie doke. So let's reduce that again in size. I encourage you to look at all the patterns that are available to you. They can get really complex. Now, this is this again was. Um, let me make this a little bit larger. I just made a very simple polka dot. When you get into the zebra skin, or you get into some of the tiger skins, or some of the others, this looks like a repeated pattern. Some of them are better designed and don't look like they are, like the one that we have here for the peacock really um, complex and elaborate. Now, as you recall, I said that you don't have to have a single object um, to create a pattern. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the number two, two start file and I'm gonna click on this. And if we look at this and I double click on it, we can see that we are in a group. So we have the stars, we have famous Frank's hot dogs, the, the, the type, and the little illustrations in here, multiple images in here that have been all selected at once and then created as a group. Well, again, I can take this and drag it inside here and that becomes a pattern. So now we can come back here and let's um, deselect and go out of here and let's select this shape here, which is the shape of the truck. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna apply that. Now that's huge. We can always change the size of the pattern. Again, if you double click on the pattern, we can go ahead and I can reduce the size of it here. Remember we have our, our settings here under the width and height. So if I want to, let's right now it's almost two by one. So let's make it one by two. And notice how it overlaps. I don't want that, so let's undo that. Um, I want to, let's go ahead. I'm gonna cancel that and let's do that again. Um, or not, we can go ahead because I'm running out of time here, it's 2.53. But again, um, it doesn't have to be only um, that one element. It can be all these multiple elements. Now, some of these things aren't showing up. So why is that? Let me go back again and double click on here and see why that is the case. Well, maybe I didn't select everything or maybe it's not allowing us to work with certain elements. If it, if it has editable text, it may not allow us to, um, I forget. 
whether it um, may not allow us to use that as, uh, as a pattern fill. Okay, well, let's go ahead and select done. Um, maybe I have to release the blends in order to do that. Let's look at the finished version and see what they've done here. Um, and number two, yeah, they have all of them. So what I would probably want to do is release some of the blends and make sure that I don't have any editable text. And that should include all of those gradients. Let me go ahead and look inside our um, uh, our lot. Let's see. I want to look inside here. Where is it? I'm going to close this. Oh, another thing is that um, gradients, if you're not aware of it, can you can change the opacity. And that's what's done with these clouds here. It can go from 100% opaque to zero opacity. And that's really nice, too, so that you can actually see through parts of it. Um, what was I looking at here? I wanted to get the, let's go to window. And let's. Look at swatches. There we go. I've got swatches open. Let's select this one. And that's that. They have the orange background. And maybe they filled it with a truck vinyl. So let's double click on that. So that's why it didn't show up. We did, they decided to use um, a different kind of tile, hex by column, um, no spacing, five by five up. So that's what we need to do to go back to our other one and change it. Okay. So, you know, as I said, this would be an example of where um, patterns start to get way more compl complex. I encourage you to look at the libraries of patterns and um, check them out see what um, some of them and you know break them apart as we're doing with this to deconstruct them to see how they work okay so that's pretty much it um, for today so we have let's see who's here um, okay Okie doke. So I'm going to end this today. Um, and then when we come back, we'll go ahead and we'll do the lesson itself. We're really kind of ahead of the game. This is midterm. Um, we have a week break now, a spring break. And um, after lesson 10, we have 11, 12, 13, 14, only four left. So the last few weeks will probably be mostly a work week or we will use it for review. Okie doke. So um, are there any questions before we leave today? Yes, no? No? I think this is a great lesson, this one in particular. It really can enhance and dress up uh, an illustration or design um, very effectively. Um, and sometimes with a bit of work, sometimes with not much must or fuss. Um, I did mark you. Um, okay. Let's see, I have AM. I got everybody here. I'm pretty sure I have everyone. Arturo, yeah. Okie doke. Um, thanks for um, for sharing um, and or stopping by. Um, I will post this um, within an hour or so, and hopefully you uh, find it helpful while you're doing the lesson. So if there's any confusion and following the instructions. 
Um, my little instructions here will show you how to, to complete the, the lesson using the tools that they're introducing and also to use them in different ways, not only the ways that they're indicating in the, um, the lesson itself, but other, other uh, applications of the same tools. Okay, so I'm going to pause the recording and I'm going to say goodbye.